Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yes, yes, today guys, well, what are we gonna do? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna hang out in the basement and we're gonna play games. That's right, we're just gonna hang out today, take our time, go through the basement, play whatever catches our eye, and, and really, no hurry, no rush, let's just hang out in the basement. Does that sound fun? It, it actually sounds great to me. You know, I, I was gonna go in the garage today, and it is, it is a hot, humid day today, but you know, I got up this morning, I threw a hat on, I went to Home Depot, and yes, I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday. <laughs> so, but anyway, I go to Home Depot to get supplies to fix the Quantum, uh, because we, we have to repair the bottom corner of the cabinet on the Quantum. And uh, so I got some uh, three quarter inch particle board. I picked up a biscuit joiner, which I've always wanted to have. And we're gonna, we, the plan is to is basically to cut the corner off, get a new piece of wood on here and join it with some biscuits. But I, I got back from Home Depot and the three quarter inch particle board is not thick enough. The, the, the cabinet, the original wood is thicker than three quarters of an inch. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. And, and actually I, I looked around the garage and I found a piece of melamine and I compared that to the cabinet and the melamine is like dead nuts on. So I think I have to go back to Home Depot, get some melamine, and we'll use that for the repair job. Uh, so, so as a result, we cannot work on the Quantum today. I, I, I was trying to think what we should do today. I was gonna, I was gonna do the control panel on the Street Fighter because I just got a new overlay for it. I thought that'd be fun. We might do that tomorrow or something. I thought about doing the uh, the graphic design video, and I said, you know what? I want to just play games, and honestly, that's what I want to do, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're just gonna go around the basement, and, and we're gonna play some stuff. <laughs> how, how does that sound? It, it sounds actually really fun to me. It, it, it does. So I thought that maybe we'd play pole position first. What, what do you think about that? And that? That's a nice quick game. It's a nice game to warm up with. Uh, let me turn the lights off. But, and, and this is how the basement usually is down here. I usually only turn the overhead lights on when I'm doing videos. Uh, so let's play as some pole position. As you guys probably know or, or have heard me talk about, I mean, pole position is, without a doubt, one of my favorite games. Top Top three, you know, and I'm a pretty competent pole position player. My high score is, I don't know, 63, 700 or something. Uh, and, and my buddy Matt McCarthy and I, and Matt is from my band, The Kill Screens. We also do apps together. So Matt and I play it quite a bit. Matt's got 65, 310 down here, which is, which is outstanding. And we keep track of our scores up here on these little cards. You can see that there. So Matt's high score is 65, 310. And then we also keep track of our qualified lap time. And the best we've ever gotten is 55, 84 by Matt. So that score that Matt got down here is actually pretty legit. Because uh, the world record on this, I think, is 66 or 67. So I don't know. This is just a great game. It's an awesome Atari classic, uh, you know, created by Namco in Japan. I mean, it, it, to me, it's just pure perfection. Uh, the, the controls are just spot on, and everything about it is just so fluid. You feel so in control, like when you crash, you, you feel like it's your fault. So let me see if I can set up the camera here real good, and, and we'll just play a quick game. This will be a nice game to warm up with. What do you think? All right, let me see if, uh, make sure my head's not blocking anything. All right, good. All right, here we go. So the first lap is the qualifying lap, okay? And uh, so we, we want to qualify, okay? And we're starting out in low gear, now I'm in high, and the controls are super, super responsive. And with this game, you really don't want to squeech, uh, uh, you don't want the, the tires to screech like that. You're losing time when you do that. So you want to kind of have as much finesse as you can when you're playing this game. Now, the, the, the first lap here, the qualifying lap, is, is fairly simple. Um, you should be able to get pole position every time. And, and basically, depending on how you finish, uh, you then get the, the position for the race, which is after this. And if you do really well, you get the pole position, which is you get to be the first car in the lineup. Okay, so we got 56-46. Not too bad. So we just earned the pole position, and we got a 4,000-point bonus. So that first lap is pretty critical, because if you don't get the pole position, there's really no use in, in playing anymore. I usually shift around 100, uh, 110 miles an hour, 105. And uh, so, all right, so this is it. We're playing for real now. This is the this is the real race. And uh, I think it's what four laps. There's a big cluster of cars there. I kind of played it safe and went in the grass. But this looks dangerous right here. Boy, I got lucky there. All right, I gotta really pay attention here. 
I just don't want to crash at all. And honestly, I don't think I've ever completed the game without crashing. I usually, I think my best ever was like crashing once. And I really, <laughs> see, look at that, I just crashed once. I really should shut up, but. <laughs> Alright, come on. We, we, we can still have a good game. If I play well here, we'll do okay. I love this game so much, though. I, I seriously do. Oh my god. I'm a little rusty. I haven't played in a while. I've been spending all my time working on the games, not playing them. So it's always a nice treat when we do videos like this. I, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna do it here, guys. We're gonna run out of time. Boy, that was a bad game. <laughs> that was not good. Uh, so we got 35, almost 35, 750. This game's cool though. It saves like the top 100 uh, initials and scores. Um, I actually put an NV RAM in there. You wanna play again? What do you think? I kinda want to. Let's see if we can do a little bit better. What other games do you guys want to play? I kind of want to play Zookeeper. I thought uh, Super Mario Brothers would be fun too. I haven't played that in a while on the on the Versus Red Tent. And that's kind of a cool different version. It's a little different than the NES one. It's hard. So the game wouldn't really be too long because I, I get to a point all the time where I just die. Alright, let's get through. Alright, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> if you crash on the qualifying lap, there is just no reason to keep playing. Uh, all right, maybe we'll come back to pole position. <laughs> maybe. All right, let, let's play some Zookeeper. Now, Zookeeper, awesome game. I mean, this is a, a Taito classic, guys, and, and really a, a pretty rare game. Hard to find, uh, hard to keep working. It's, it's really just a great, great, great game. Uh, really like a forgotten classic. because. You know, not a lot of people on the street have heard about Zookeeper, but it's really a great game. And it also plays really well in MAME. So if you guys have a MAME cabin, I encourage you to try it. But let, let's play us a little bit of Zookeeper here. Um, let me kind of get it on here. All right, right about there. So I'm not really super skilled in this game. I do okay. I have friends who are way better than me at it. But we'll see what we can do here. Alright, so the game kind of starts out slow. And when you first start playing this game, it seems like you're, you're trying to keep the animals inside the brick cage. And that's really not the case at all. You want to let the animals out so you can jump over them. And the more animals you jump, the more points you get. But in the beginning here, that's not as obvious, so I usually just do whatever with not a lot of strategy the first few levels, because it the animals don't really come out very fast and they're not very aggressive. But see, I could jump two animals here, get 500 points. And if you jump one, you get 100. And we'll just put them back in. And then you do get a bonus when the round's over for every animal that's in the cage. All right, so this is a little uh, bonus level, kind of Mario Bros. Uh, Mario Brothers inspired, if you ask me, or Donkey Kong even, and we got to rescue the girl, and we did. Okay. Now the one thing to keep in mind is that uh, the animals always leave the cage the opposite direction that you are. So if you're standing here on the right, they're gonna go left. Oh, and it's it is a good idea to have all the animals going in the same direction, if at all possible, because it makes your jumps a lot easier. So right now, if I stay on the right, they're all going to go left, which is good, because I want them all to go in the same direction here. But you can see, not a lot of animals have come out, and we're and the time's almost over. So let's just see if we can get... We got 2,000 points there for jumping three. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. Alright, I'm trying to get them. So we got one guy that's going the other direction. Try to just start jumping over as many as we can. So it gets a little tricky, and uh, 
you can usually find a little tiny spot in between the animals where you can land if, if there's a, a cluster of them. All right, we gotta just get away from these coconuts. And you do get 5,000 points when you land on the platform the first time. And uh, so this is the second bonus level here, and I don't try to linger on this because it does get kind of ridiculous with the pace the animals come out. So I usually just try to... And then you get a free bonus keeper, so that's a free life right there. All right, now the game's gonna get a little more interesting. But it, it does take a while for it to ramp up. So I, I wanna get that, uh, the net right now, so I can really start focusing on getting the animals all going in the same direction. Okay, so I'm gonna stay here and hopefully they'll all go right as they come out. See, we got some nice clusters here. So let's see if we can get a good jump. Uh, just look at that, 60,000 point jump right there. Which is significant. Here's another big cluster. Ah, oh, got greedy. Alright, so let's see if we can get them all going in the same direction. Alright, come on out, guys. Up here, up here, up here. No, 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 up here. Alright, so we got a big cluster of animals down here. It's a 15,000 point jump. So it's just total chaos right now. Ah! Oh. Uh. So I'm gonna kind of repair this. So let's get the net. I want them to exit up off the top. So they're kind of going every which way right now. Oh my god. So anyway, yeah! That's Zookeeper. I'm, I'm not very good. <laughs> I mean, the high score on here, Don Hayes got 3 million points. I just got 186,000, which is okay. The game does save high scores. Uh, this John, the other John that was on there is not me. That's a default score. Um, I have a rechargeable uh, battery on there, like a phone battery, and uh, it doesn't quite save the scores all the time. It loses them quite a bit, to be honest, so. All right, so let's go over here, and uh, I want to play some Mario Brothers. I, I just, I'm in the mood to do that. So let's, uh, did we play this in the last video that we did like this? I don't remember, I don't care. I, I want to play this. So let's, let's get set up here. Let me bring the camera down a little bit. So this is a versus red tent, okay, which, uh, is a, uh, a cocktail table, I guess, you know, in, in Japan, a lot of their games were sit-down, like the candy cabs, those are all like sit-down cabinets, so they really liked this, this kind of sit-down form factor, not like a U.S. cocktail where the monitor is perfectly flat, you know, they, they, they all kind of look like this. I mean, this is really like an early candy cabinet, you know, but, but what's cool about this is it has two monitors and two sets of controls, and, you know, we have a monitor on this side, you have a monitor on that side, and so you can have two different games. Um, or some games are head-to-head, -head, like Balloon Fight, you know, one person sits on this side, one person sits on the other side, and you play head-to-head. -head. So it's a very versatile cabinet. I really like it a lot. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. And what's cool about it, too, is that the games, they're not the same as the NES ones. For the most part, they're, they all are a little different. They're a little more arcadey uh, and harder and different. And maybe some features are missing or some were added, but in general, most games are a little bit different than the NES. So you kind of have these very iconic games that we all love, but just a different flavor of them. And, and this versus Super Mario Brothers is, is one of those games. So let's go ahead and play it. I think we did play this in the last video like this, but I don't care. I, I really do feel like playing this. So I don't, I don't know how far we're gonna get. Um, make sure we have a good camera angle here. But I, I'm not very good at this. And it's funny how when I was younger, I could really just place this game like crazy and always finish it. And now as an adult, not so much. Um, I lost my Mario skills. I think that'll be okay. All right, let's give it a shot here. Okay. All right, so A is jump and B is run. And a lot of the secrets, you know, they're all here. <laughs> I 
You know, like that free life is hanging out over here. I don't think we're gonna point press too much. Let's just kind of blast through this and see how far we can get. I mean, you talk about a game that I have played one gazillion times, <laughs> you know? I mean, this game is just, it's been part of my life for like the past 30 years. <laughs> However old it is. And the thing is, I've owned this game on so many systems, all right? I, I owned it on the NES. Uh, there was like, you know, some Game Boy versions on the Wii U, on the, you know, you, you play it on, uh, on the Super Nintendo, it's just like a game that has never gone away. And if you've never played it, shame on you. <laughs> but this version's pretty fun. Alright. I remember when I was a kid, though, when you found all these little secrets and these bricks, it was just mind-numbing. You know, we didn't have the internet to find out this stuff. It was just kind of word of mouth, word of mouth. And just the fact that you could destroy the bricks was pretty darn cool. Can we go up here? Yeah, why not? And, when, and the first time I ever did that as a kid, oh my god. What? I can go up there where the score is? <laughs> so right there, that's a little difference, that little gap. That's not in the NES version. Alright, let's go to four. I hate this level so much. If you don't have the, the fire power on this level, you're kind of hosed. I remember trying to figure this stuff out as a kid, like how to slide. Ah, oh, I blew it. <laughs> there we go. I mean, that is some elite stuff right there. That's some elite platforming skills. I wonder if I could do it here. You know, playing this game with a joystick, initially I didn't like it, and now I love it. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. Maybe I need a D-pad to do that thing. Ah. Let's get out of here. Go away. I don't remember, but I guess the timer, if it's like an odd number, you get fireworks, or if it's an even number, I don't remember. But there's definitely something with the timer and the fireworks and the bonus. Alright, so this is World 4-2 here. It's a little challenging. No, no, no. So there's something over here. I don't remember. I know there's like a coin coin machine thing. And yes, we called them coin machines. <laughs> I don't know, should we just get out of here? Ah! Blew it. I missed the warp, didn't I? Ah, uh, there was a vine. Going too fast for this. Let's see, what's over here? World 5? I guess we could take that. I never go this way. I missed the vine warp that was in there, I think. Ah. 
Skip it. And I guess the guys that have world records on this game, you gotta play every single level. One one, one two, one three, one four, two one, two two, etc. 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 So I've never really sat down and tried playing for high score. I should though one day. It'd be kind of fun. Oh, I hate these bullet dudes. Ah! <laughs> Gotta hit that spring. I really start falling apart, like, if, if we can even make it to eight, I don't think we will. Yeah, this is it. I was about to say, I fall apart when the Hammer Brother guys come out, and there they are. What? How did I just die? Okay, that was weird. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I stink at all of these games. The only game I'm good at, really, is Pole Position and Donkey Kong. And I did horrible on Pole Position. <laughs> and I do have the Matt Osborne High Score Save Kit in here, which is awesome. So let's see. So that was the sixth highest score. So I don't know, I guess my best is uh, 100,000 points or something. All right, what should we play now? I, I kind of want to play Paperboy. How does that sound? We haven't played Paperboy in a while. Paper, you know, in the last like month or two, Matt McCartney's been coming here. and We've been playing that game, and it's a lot of fun. And listen to this, by the way. My Journey has an attract mode all of a sudden, and it shouldn't, because there's no attract mode in Journey, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, let's see, can we actually film this back here? Did we play Paperboy in the last one of these videos too? I don't remember. Okay, so Paperboy. Another awesome Atari classic. I mean, what's what's great about this game, of course, is these handlebars. I mean, come on, you cannot play this in MAME. You cannot recreate this. <laughs> so, you, you move forward by, you move the, the bicycle is forward by going like that, and then you make them stop by going backwards. And then there's a button on this side that, that, that you use to throw the papers. And uh, really, just an amazing, amazing freaking game. It, it's so good. It's so, so good. And Easy Street, that's the, that's the level everyone plays. And, you know, I relate a lot to this game because I was a paper boy <laughs> when I was a kid. Uh, are there, there, there's no paper boys anymore. They don't exist. So I gotta calibrate my, uh, my, I can tell right now. So the, the game self, self calibrates, but you gotta play a couple games. So we're just gonna go ahead and calibrate the joysticks really fast. The handlebars. Uh, all right, here. So what we do, what we do here is we hold in uh, the first player and the second player, and it clears the values. Okay, and so now. I'm just gonna go ahead and do all these till it says okay. And I'm just kind of doing the extremes. Let me, let me clear them again. So hold in the first button and I'm just going back and forth, left and right, up and down. And it basically measures the, uh, there's a couple pots in here and it measures the extremes. Okay, so we're all calibrated. Like I said, the game is self-calibrating, so if you leave it on and you play a couple games, they'll, they'll start centering themselves, or you can just accelerate the process like that. I usually don't have to do that very often, though. But I haven't played this in a while. Okay, so he should be riding in a straight line now. All right, so we want to basically deliver papers to our customers and we want to destroy the bad guys. The, these black houses here are non-customers and we get mega points for rolling over their, their plants and breaking all their windows. And that's really how you earn a lot of points in this game. Boy, the, these handlebars don't feel good. I don't like how it's acting. It's not going very oh, left. Man, that's Hang on, I, I want to recalibrate them again. 
Let's see, press start two to advance. Okay. So let's clear the values. So left is that, right. I know, this, is, this isn't very fun, guys. <laughs> I'm just moving the joystick left, right, forward, back, just trying to get the extreme values, you know, the, from high to low. Okay. All right, let's see if that makes it a little more centered. All right, let's try this again. Easy street. Much better. Okay. Now we can responsively go left. So I want to try to like run over the grass here. You get, you get great bonus points at the end. Ah, missed. I missed the papers too. Crash. So it is a risk versus reward thing. I mean, to run over the, the flowers and the grass, you got to get kind of close to the house which is risky. Can go through that. Let's see if we can hit the bicyclist. Look at that. So we got this dopey kid with the RC cart. All right. Break dancer. All right. Paperboy player, but Joe is. Joe Senegaglia. He got the world record on it. I should study his technique. Oh, Rack Rinkers. Alright, so this is the, uh, the training course, as they call it. And it's kind of like a little bonus level. And I'm trying to hit these targets. And when you go over the ramp, it recharges your paper supply. You can see on the top left, that's how many papers I have. So we lost uh, a customer. I, you know, this whole subscriber thing really doesn't matter. I mean, so, I think some guys will, will break every window in every house just so you have more things that you can destroy. You know, because you get you get bonus points when you break non-subscribers' windows and, and run over their plants. And so if you have all non-subscribers, you have more opportunities to get more bonus points. Ah! Oh, that was close. Just lost the customer. I hate that cat. One last customer. Okay. Let's see if we can hit those dudes. Got him. <laughs> Alright, so we're, we're, we're progressing through the week here. So that was Tuesday, and now we're going on to Wednesday. And when you get to Sunday, that's the end of, end of the game, when you finish Sunday. And we're only on Wednesday. And the game does get pretty hard. I, I, 
I fi I made it to Sunday only a couple times. I cannot consistently. Uh, I just got hit by Michael Jackson. <laughs> He's a bum. Not really Michael Jackson. <laughs> so once you kind of get okay at this game it is, they are long games as you can see and I'm not even amazing at it but I, I know how to play it enough when I was a kid though I mean this game would last like I couldn't get past Monday I really dislike those cats Car kit too. Uh. Hey, I don't like the tires. Grass. Bombs. Oh wow. Grass. Kind of having an okay game here. I'm le at least surviving. Okay, so you can see the bonuses we get: course timer, and then we get a breakage bonus for everything that we broke. You know, glass and flowers and, and mailboxes and stuff like that. And we just got a uh, new subscriber. So the game's gonna start getting pretty tough here. Whoa, that was close. there but we lose uh, points so I get my breakage bonus only not my uh, timer bonus okay so that was Friday now we're moving on to Saturday so let's see if we can get past this and get to Sunday 
Kids got three RC cars, the breakdancer dudes moving all over the place. We got skateboarders everywhere. No, 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 no. Woo! Ah! I never <laughs> like the game. Alright. Four tires. Oh my god! We gotta pass this. Don't die, don't die, don't, don't, don't die. We did it. Whew! All right, so we're gonna get to Sunday. I'm actually getting into this. Woo! All right, you know what? I don't care. We, we lost the bonus, whatever. <sighs> it's a long game, guys. All right, so that was Saturday. Now we're moving on to Sunday. Now, the Sunday papers are bigger, they're fatter, and uh, the physics are gonna be a little different. Move a little slower. Really want to pass this. <laughs> now I'm obsessed. What? That's no fair. Okay, that was just plain dumb. All right, gotta be careful here. So close to the end, guys. <sighs> that sucked. Uh, why? The scores are all gone? Did I erase those? Uh, that's interesting. Where'd all my high scores go? Hmm. Did I accidentally delete those when we were in the test menu? I don't know. Well, that's definitely not the highest score we ever had in the machine. I, I don't know what's up with that, so. Oh my god. <laughs> so, boy, that game took forever. <laughs> uh, what do you want to you want to play pinball? Let's play like one more game. I feel like this video is getting long now. Uh What do you think? Let's play some pinball. Does that sound fun? It's kind of a pain to set up for pinball. I kind of want to play NBA Fast Break. It's a fun game. Yeah, why don't we uh let me see if I can figure out a way to set the tripod up here. Where we can really see what's going on. Maybe Whirlwind would be a little better. Can kind of come down here like so. A little better with the light on. I don't know, is that going to be a good video? Pinball is so tough to film. I, I just. I, I know I did a bunch of pinball videos a long time ago, but I almost like gave up on them. Well, actually, I, I haven't had a new pinball machine in a while, but it's just I, I, I never got the sense that you could really tell what was going on very easily. Am I wrong? Uh, let's play some Whirlwind. Whirlwind's pretty great. Let's see. It'd be nice if you guys could see the display and the... Uh... How's that? Yeah, let's give it a shot. 
All right, so Whirlwind. Uh, this is a System 11 Williams game. Uh, it came out in, what, 89, 90? And uh, it's the oldest pinball machine I have, and it's about as old as I want to get because I think, I think pinball prior to Whirlwind and this era of game, I, I just can't relate to at, at all. It's just it's too old, too slow. And really, when I was a kid, when this game came out, I, I wasn't playing pinball. I was playing video games. So I, I never really played pinball when I was younger, so I don't have the nostalgia for it. Um, but I respect it, and I enjoy it, and I like it. And Whirlwind is one of the best games ever. And and this game was created by Pat Lawler. And, and Pat Lawler, you know, he did Adam's Family and Twilight Zone. You know, he's considered one of the best pinball designers ever. And what's really cool about this game is it has a fan on top. And, and this is a, if you haven't figured it out, a, a disaster-themed pinball machine. And the Whirlwind, of course, is a tornado that's chasing us. And so I just went into the cellar there and I, I lit, uh, I, got an, I got a reward, because on the back glass here, there's lights, and uh, I want to get back in that cellar. Alright, so we just started a storm. Okay, because I the object of the game here is to 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 get uh, to light up all of the compass lights that that are demanding to be lit, and you light them by hitting the targets. And the storm starts, this ramp goes down, and now we want to lock the ball by hitting it up that ramp. And uh, and there's little spinners on the play field right now to mess with the ball. And there's a fan on top of the game that is blowing on me right now. It's such a cool effect. All right, I need to get up that ramp. There we go. So you can see there, we just locked the first ball. But super cool game. And I've considered getting rid of this a few times, and I always talk myself out of it. The only reason I'm, I, I've thought about getting rid of this pinball machine is because I've had it the longest. I, I've had this game for about eight years, seven years, something like that, and and so, yeah, I've had it for a long time. It might be time to get some new blood down here. But every time I think about it, or every time I play it, I'm like, wow, I love this game. And I do. Like, right now, I'm feeling that. I'm like, wow, I haven't played World Win in a while, but I love this game. <laughs> And my, my game is in, in amazing shape. It's a, it's a player's machine. The play field is, is good enough. It's got a little bit of wear around the, uh, the discs, which they all do. It's got the original Mylar. So that was lit. I just got a super door score, 500,000 points. No, don't drain. So this is our last ball here. But I love the sounds and the music. It just does a lot for me. All right, so we just locked the second ball. So now we need to lock the third ball, and the third ball gets locked underneath this ramp over here. So let's see if we can do that, and then we can start multi-ball. I had a guy offer me a World Cup soccer for this. I thought about it and turned it down. I had another guy offer me a uh, roller coaster tycoon for this for a trade. I thought about it and I turned it down. All right, let's see if we can. Oh, we just started multi ball. Okay. And so right now, I want to try to get up that back ramp and get a million points. And we just did it. Ah. So that was the multi-ball mode. And I just got a free game, which means nothing because the game's on free play. So I really want an extra ball. Ah. So, oh, no, no, no. But we got a free ball, so we shoot again here. How's this looking, by the way? Can you guys really tell what's going on? Whirlwind. So 
So if I can get if I get in the cellar right now, I'll light extra ball, and I really need to do that. All right, let's get in there. Nope. There we go. All right, so extra ball is now lit, which is back there. So let's try to grab that. Oh, almost. So I just, there you go. Just gotta hit that target in the back. We just got a free ball. Okay, so I guess, oh my God. I'm not much of a nudger, guys. I haven't, I haven't mastered the nudging skills <laughs> that the real pinball players have. And we're having an okay game. Seven million points. It's respectable. And so if we get all of the uh, the super cellar door things back there, it kind of starts a wizard mode, which I've only started a couple times. It's pretty wicked, though. The game just go, starts going crazy. So right now I need to get northwest, which is that flashing target. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's Whirlwind. Awesome game. It truly is. It, it, it's, it is a classic. I mean, it's it's one of the best pinball machines ever made, if you ask me. And uh, I, I'm going to keep it. I, if anything, I should put LEDs in it. Would that be kind of fun? I should LED my games. I'm, I'm starting to change my mind about that because uh, every time I see them on Friends games, I, I, I kind of dig it. So... All right, guys, I, I think that's enough. Why don't we stop here? Because uh, we played a lot of games, and, and I don't want the video to be terribly long. But I, I guess we could do some uh, viewer mail. You want to do that? Um, I, I printed out a few. Oh, it's nice hanging out down here. It's, it's actually, you know, for me, I, I tell you the truth, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a stress-free video. <laughs> you know, because doing the, the, the hour, hour and a half long restore videos, it, it is a lot of work. It, it honestly is, and the editing takes a lot longer. You know, I haven't stopped filming. I mean, this is one, one take, one piece of film. All I need to do is put the intro on, and, and, and then the uh, intro graphic and the music, and then intro graphic, or the ending graphic, and, and that's it. So, uh, nice, nice uh, relaxing day in the basement here. So, all right, let's uh, read some viewer mail. And by the way, if you want to participate, you need to email them to me at blkdog7 at gmail.com. Blkdog7 at gmail.com. In the in the subject line, please put viewer mail. Okay, the first one is from Tony. Uh, hey John, uh, I just want to say thanks for all that you do for the gaming community. Your vids have gotten me the courage and the insight to go out and do my own thing. So far, I have built three bar top MAME machines from scratch. Those are cool. You know, I've seen some really cool bar top MAME machines that people have built, and I think I, I've seen some really good ones. And I, you know, have you ever seen that little um, Namco reunion uh, countertop bar top they, they made that has like Pac Man and Galaga? Like, I think that's a cool little cabinet. And uh, and I've seen people that have made one similar to that, but put MAME inside of it. And, and, and these days, you can just shove like a, a decased laptop in there, or even just a laptop. But that's cool, Tony. You built three of those. Uh, my next build will be to convert a video poker cabinet to centipede, uh, to a centipede cabaret clone. I have enclosed a picture of said machine. I know that you being a purist, you think that converting a dedicated machine is taboo. I would like your thoughts on converting a video poker cabinet. Is that taboo as well? Thank you, Tony. Um, all right, so Tony has a, a, a video poker machine right right there. You see that? And, and it's funny. I have come across a lot of those machines throughout the years, uh, especially in warehouses. And and really, these these games are illegal. Uh, these are little gambling machines, and, and most of them the the bar would pay out the cash you know and and so these are really little uh it's 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 not uh above board these machines really and uh i i, I see no problem in doing whatever you want to those cabinets because i don't anticipate anyone collecting or caring about those in the future but who knows but you know we come across these all the time. Operators have them, and they're good for monitors to get the monitors out of them. But I have also seen people tastefully convert these into like uh, multi-cades or and, and stuff like that. Um, I have a friend uh, in Chicago. He converted one of these into 
I think a multi Williams. Yeah, he did, and it he made it like a little mini Stargate cabinet, and it looked badass. So, yeah, I think these poker cabinets are kind of cool, and you could do some neat things with them. I I would totally do that. That that would be a nice little cabinet, you know, and, and you could put Mame in there, or, or or centipede, make it a centipede cabaret clone. I would I would totally go for it, Tony. I think those cabinets are kind of neat, and I've seen some good conversions, and uh, I think otherwise. They're, you know, they're little gambling garbage machines, really. I mean, nobody wants those. Uh, it's funny. I, I, I've been to bars, like, the last couple years where they have these machines and they're still paying out money. <laughs> it's on the down low. <laughs> but, uh, okay, uh, viewer mail from Japan. Hey, John, great videos as always, brother. I, I just watched part two of the Quantum, and man, what a cool project. I've been traveling to the Ukraine and the Horn of Africa for work, and I haven't been able to touch base with you for quite some time. I'm spending some well-earned downtime with my son and fiancé um, uh, down here in Colombia, and thought I'd double-check to see if the Dragon's Lair disc made it to you okay. Uh, if I was even if it's even usable for you as always brother awesome stuff keep up the great work You have inspired me to start collecting when I return to the States uh, I've even thought about just bagging my government job altogether and opening a bitchin barcade on the west side of Portland far away from ground control Don't need to create the competition when it isn't needed figure I would need 300 to 500 grand to start well here is to setting goals take it easy man I know you're busy, but shoot me a quick note if you get the time Aaron so uh, I wanted to read this email because Aaron uh, is a military guy stationed in Japan, and he emailed me, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, uh, saying that he had a Dragon's Lair disc and, and wanted to know if I wanted it. And I said, yes, I, I would love to have it, because my Dragon's Lair disc had some bit rot on it, you know, like the snow. And, and, and I thought maybe, well, maybe yours is better, and, and it would be a better fit for my machine, or it would work better. So, so Aaron sent me this from the military base, and, and Aaron, yes, I did get it. I have not had a chance to test it yet, and I, I will soon, but I, I do want to thank you personally for sending this disc, and I have hopes that uh, there's no bit rot and it looks better than my other disc, um, but right now I'm rocking Space Ace, and I'm probably going to keep it in there for a couple weeks. I do miss Dragon's Lair, though. I I'm going to tell you, since I put Space Ace in that machine, I realized Dragon Lair, for me, is the better game. I've heard other people say they like Space Ace better. I think Dragon's Lair is the game, I to me. I mean, that's the game I grew up with. So anyway, Aaron, thanks again for the disc. I really appreciate it. I it, it will go to use, uh, and I will put it in there soon, and I'll report back. And, and thanks for watching, and, and, and thanks for, uh, for serving our country. All right. Next one here is from Sean. And this is a big one. Buckle up. <laughs> Alright, so hi John. I'm a longtime follower of John's Arcade and I love the show. I recently decided to try and win an arcade machine on eBay. I won a BAS cabinet for 60 for 60 pounds. Okay, I, I don't know what this machine is. Okay, it, it's it's some sort of a generic cabinet. It looks like this. Okay. He's calling it a BAS machine. Probably a UK thing. I don't know what it is. It, it looks kind of neat though. It, it's kind of a cool cabinet. Alright. Uh, he says, the plan is to try and restore it and get it going. Uh, uh, I thought it was going to be a bit easier than it's, than it's turning out to be. I'm a complete uh, new new to the hobby and wanted to give it a go. You inspired me to get an arcade machine. I played with MAME for years but wanted the real thing. I've run into some issues already and wondered if you can help me out. Uh, give me any recommendations on where to start. I've opened up the machine and found there is no power supply or game board. I have a JAMA connector and then a load of connectors and one white cable which I think is the power lead but it's not connected to anything and I have no idea what all the cables are for. I've attached photos of everything. My initial plan was to get a multi jamma board. Do you have any recommendations of what I should get? I love the classic 80s games, also like the 90s. I've been looking at the Pandora's box or the 16-1 with only classics. What type of power supply should I get? I've been switching, uh, I've seen switching power supplies, I've seen a half power supply with the bullet connection on them, are these any good? Uh, is it just a case of buying a power supply and a multi-game board to get me up and running? I tried Googling for any information on the BAS cabinet, but I can't find any. What I wanted to do is get going and play on and then replace joysticks and buttons, blah, blah, blah. Sorry for all the questions, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can, guys. Um, but if anyone knows the answers, I'm sure it's you. Any help you can give or any advice on where to start would be absolutely great. Thanks again, Sean. Uh, P.S. My wife is into arcade machines, but she enjoys watching your show. Uh, she got really into the Journey Restore, but she wasn't over the moon with me buying a cabinet. I said it's for our kids and, and me to play on. I've been a bit, uh, it's been of a bit of a hard sell for the wife, but I'm sure she will like it once it's working. Okay, so 
he sent me photos of this cabinet and I've been trying to make heads or tails here. Um, so here's the monitor. It's a hand track monitor, which is fairly common. It's a fairly common later model monitor. Uh, you know, you can get cap kits and, and for this monitor over on Bob Roberts, okay? And then, so, so he's got this, uh, what appears to be a JAMA connection, but no PCB going to it, okay? And then there's a bunch of just crazy loose connectors, okay? And I can't, I don't know what's what, you know, this right here looks like AC. I don't know, is that going to the marquee light or the monitor? Um, I, I, there's four wires here. I, I, this looks like it might go to the control panel. So I don't know what's going on here. There's a bunch of odd stuff that doesn't make sense to me for a JAMA cabinet. Um, unless there's connections going to coin doors and stuff. He's got these connectors here, which are looks like more power connectors. Maybe at one time there was some kind of proprietary power supply that these plugged into. There's some kind of connectors here going to coin door. All right, what would I do? What would John do? Okay, you're staring at all this stuff and you're trying to make heads or tails of this proprietary stuff. And, and honestly, there's no reason to make heads or tails of this because JAMA is a standard, man. I, what, this is what I would do. I would, it's gonna sound scary, but I think in the, in the long run, it's gonna be uh, easier, I think, maybe, okay? All right, well, first things first, you're gonna have to try to figure these. If you, if you don't wanna take my suggestion, you're gonna have to figure out what these wires do, because I have no idea where they're going. I, I can only guess, you know. Like, this definitely looks like a power connector, probably for the monitor, okay? W when you turn the game on, does it even do anything? Is, is the monitor turning on? Are the lights turning on? Is, is, is this cable here for the lights, you know? What I would probably do, is there an isolation transformer in there? Uh, what I would probably do is this. I, I would start over. <laughs> I would. I would just go get a, a JAMA harness on eBay for 20 bucks. And that way you, you could start from scratch. You know exactly what every wire's, where it's supposed to go. All you need is a JAMA harness and a switching power supply and, and an isolation transformer, uh, unless there's one there already. That's all you need, okay, to get this game going. And uh, what I would do is go to Bob Roberts' website, uh, uh, Google uh, like Bob Roberts JAMA wiring because he has an image showing the basics that you need to get a JAMA cabinet going. Okay, he's got a line filter, an AC cord, an isolation transformer, a switching power supply, a monitor. I know this sounds daunting. It's really quite simple though. And it, I, I, go to Bob, go, Google the real Bob Roberts. You got to look for his JAMA wiring setup guide. It basically shows how to wire a cabinet from scratch and it's really good and, and, and well written and very clear and easy to understand. But if you're not able to figure out what all those proprietary connectors are, I'm guessing that there was some goofy power supply in this cabinet and, and that's what all those connectors were going to. That's my hunch. Um, I don't see a transformer at all in here and I don't know if there is one on the bottom of the cabinet. So it's hard for me to say without being there and, and really getting the whole picture. But you know, I, I don't know. I mean, does this connector go to the control panel? I don't know. And I can't tell because the, the coloring isn't making a lot of sense to me. This right here is red, blue, orange, and brown. I, yeah, I don't know. That could be power going to the switching power supply. And then these, these wires right here, I don't know what those are. So. If you're just interested in making a JAMA, I would probably just buy a JAMA harness really cheap and wire it up. And uh, I'm assuming you have a line filter and a transformer on the bottom. So all you would need is, ice, all you would need is uh, assuming you have a line filter and isolation transformer on the bottom, all you would need is, is a switching power supply, which you get from HAP. It's like $30. You're going to need a power supply that outputs plus 5 minus five and 12 volts. Those are the three common voltages, okay? Plus five, minus five and 12. You can get the very basic HAP power supply, the black one. I've used those in my videos. It's about $30 at HAP controls or go on eBay, go to twistedquarter.com. That's a great place to get those. And then buy yourself a JAMA harness, which is also about 20 bucks. And, and really, that should get you going. Now, as far as multi-boards, I don't know. I have no experience with any of those multi-boards except for the 60-in-1. 
uh, those game elves and the 512. I, I, I've never tried those. I don't know anything about them. I think they're hard drive based. Um, I think they're basically just little main computers. So the nice thing about the 61, 61, it's a nice board to start with. It's super cheap. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of power. It's just a little PCB and there's no hard drive. So that's the board that I would recommend, but it's very limited. It's just vertical games. You know, if you have a horizontal monitor, that board does you no good. So I think those game elves uh, do horizontal and vertical games. So I don't know. Did I help you? Maybe. Uh, but I, I think that you should. I think you should just rewire the cabinet. It looks like it's just too much of a headache and a mess. And it looks like there might have been some proprietary stuff in there, which you just don't want anymore. You just want a generic JAMA cabinet. And that looks like a great cabinet to do that with. You know, to swap boards and put a multi board in there. So good luck. If you have any more questions or want to send me more photos, I, 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 I'm more than willing to help you out some more if I can. So, all right, guys, that's it. We're done with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I release new videos on Sundays and sometimes in between like this one. So if you want to keep up with the videos, you got to click subscribe. Uh, and really, that's about it. I'll be back maybe tomorrow. <laughs> so, are you sick of me yet? So I, I'm off till Tuesday. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm in a video-making mode. So... Maybe we'll go back to the garage. I was thinking about doing a little road trip. What do you guys think about that? I kind of, I was kind of thinking about going to an arcade tomorrow. It's like I'm almost avoiding the garage now. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, All right, guys. Thanks for watching, subscribing. Check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com and Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. So I'll talk to you guys really soon. So thanks for watching. Later and bye. Bye.